A Washington City Council member by the name of John Trumbo has some rather funny ideas about how to start their city council meetings. He brought a proposal recently saying that all meetings should be forced to begin with a prayer to whom he says is, quote, directed in name and reference to the same God addressed in the Founding Fathers' signatory documents that established this nation. Oh, really? Hmm. Now, according to Ross Rory, when a fellow councilman asked him to define that God more specifically, he, of course, referenced none other than the Judeo-Christian God, of course. Quote, anyone who looks at the nation's capital with the with its depictions of Christian religious scenes and biblical inscriptions, would understand why the Finding Fathers would demand a Christian God be prayed to at all city council meetings. Yes, demand. Forget, forget about that whole separation of church and state thing. It doesn't exist in where this guy is at. Now, where is this coming from? Well, there's a recent Scopes decision, Greece versus Galloway, that he's using as quote-unquote proof that the Founding Fathers wanted Christian-only prayers to open meetings. Now, already, i got to ask, isn't that just ridiculous? I mean, look, this is a crazy, insane discussion to be even be having, especially as most constitutional scholars say that, yes, a prayer is fine in a city council meeting, as long as you don't discriminate against other denominations by, you know, allowing them to use their own opening prayers, which this guy is obviously saying, no, you can't do that. It's only my God allowed. Only my God. But what we need some is somebody to come and say, well, no, that's not right. What about Thor? Personally, I think it's ridiculous. Um, the fact that he is wanting a specific goal to be prayed to is absolutely outrageous with the separation of church and state. And our founding fathers were not necessarily Judeo-Christian um, in their beliefs. They believed in, many of them believed in higher powers, but not necessarily the one God that, um, that Christians believe in today. Hmm. Not to mention the fact that religion at that time was a lot different than it is today. We have a very big focus on um, the Bible being one of these things that we believe in 100% of the time. If you're a Christian, However, back then, it was seen more as a tool to develop um, your thoughts and ideas with, with not as a 100% this is real type of thing. Uh, my thought is just, how the hell would you, how could you possibly enforce this? In On what universe does this guy think this is even remotely enforceable? You think you can read the people's minds and go... Oh, he's not playing. He's not praying to the right God. He says it's God, but he means Yahweh, the Jew, the Jewish one. He's not praying to the Christian version. Oh, get him out of here! Or they're gonna go. Oh, oh, he he said God, but he's speaking in Arabic. Therefore, Muslim. Therefore, out of the meeting. No, they can't fucking do that. So it's it's not only is it unconstitutional, <laughs> it's really stupid and ha and has no possible. <laughs> reinforcing basis. You can't possibly do that because you can't read people's minds to find out if they're praying to the right fucking God. Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, Julia is right in saying, you know, if you ask any reputable historian, they'll tell you that the founding fathers were, you know, at most deist. They didn't believe in kind of an intervening Ju Judeo-Christian God. So him thinking that is absolute nonsense. He doesn't even know the history of his own country. But secondly, if you go to any kind of radical kind of Islamic preacher, you know, the members of ISIL and such, they say kind of you must pray to our God, kind of our God is the only God, and you know, they dictate that you have to pray to this particular one. And that's essentially, you know, in essence what this guy is trying to do, saying you must pray to my God, you know, no other God is kind of worthy apart from my God. It's just as bad in terms of like mindset and enforcing and imposing your religion on someone else. And of course that's completely contradictory to the entire you know the whole basis of the founding of America that you all have, that you all have the freedom to believe or not believe in any religion to pray to whatever god you know whether it's Set or Ice or Ice is probably the best god to pray to that is an Egyptian god or Thor. It's it's absolute nonsense. This guy's a fool, and how he's in a position of power, I do not know. So like we all we 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 all like you guys have all stated the obvious points. You know, First Amendment. 
Um, not all the founding fathers were Christian. Thomas Jefferson was a deist. He ripped out sections of the Bible that he disagreed with. Thomas Paine was an obvious atheist. Benjamin Franklin was a pretty obvious atheist, although some people contest it, even though I don't buy into that. Like, you have a mixture of different faiths and non-faiths in the Founding Fathers. So, like, the idea that they would want a specific Christian prayer is ridiculous. But to answer the question posed by Jeff in his graphic, there's no reason why we should not pray to Thor. I mean, he saved New York City. That's where I live from the Chitauri invasion. Or at least he helped. What has Jesus done lately? Turn some water into wine? Come on. You know who's better. Drop the hammer. Get it. Thor, hammer, and let's... More, more importantly, more importantly, Thor. more importantly, I don't see any ice giants. Oh, and on top of that, he saved London in his own movie. So Steven's on board, drop the hammer, Thor's our god, official for the country. 